Onward is Pixar's first big movie of 2020, and if you didn't get a chance to watch it in theaters, thanks to Disney, we can now watch it on Disney+. Plus. And the first thing I wanna tell you is that while I will be showing some clips from the movie to break down some stuff here, I will not be showing anything from the second half, so I will not spoil it for you. If you don't care about spoilers, you psychopath, go watch the movie anyway. And for the rest of you who have already seen it, I'm gonna dive into five different categories of different things that I think Pixar did a great job on, from Easter eggs and references that everybody's gonna love, your technical and visual details, some mechanics, some performance and acting, choices, there's a lot to look at. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Sir Wade and we do a ton of animation stuff here on the channel. So if you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. And if you want to let me know what other stuff you want me to make, drop it in the comments or hang out with me three days a week over on Twitch. Links for everything down below. So with that, let's jump into Easter eggs and references. Now this first one I saw the first time I watched the movie and I caught it right away. I was actually really excited about it because I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, the Burger Shire. The Shire here referencing Lord of the Rings, where the hobbits come from, and the question that Pippin asks to Aragorn. What about breakfast? We've already had it. We've had one, yes. What about second breakfast? Something the next scene has that I absolutely love. If you've worked in retail or food service, you've probably seen this face before. In this case, we've got a reference to that children's book, The Three Billy Goats Gruff, or The Three Goats, or whatever the name of it is, because we've got the troll under the bridge. I should also point out the Pizza Planet truck because people are gonna start to notice this. I wanna let the record show that I found it first. Thank you very much. Moving on. Take that Buzzfeed. Now, a lot of us know that Steve Jobs had a really big part in kind of growing Pixar into what it was. So seeing Apple products or sounds from them is not new to you. But here's some fun stuff on this quote unquote iPhone. You've got the power indicator, which is like a lightning bolt because you know, they don't have batteries. They had magic, so there you go. When we think of what we call people on, we think of a phone, but in more medieval terms, you'd think of maybe some kind of horn that you would blow. So you've got these horns here. Shields seem to be the things instead of circles for buttons. And you've got this little pointy eared and horn person. Also, just to point out the incredible work being done by the lighting team here, you've got all these different lights from the stoplights, different signs illuminating the scene in different ways. Really nice. And some great animation with secondary action of a character rubbing their eye. Something we don't really notice, but it's there. Makes us feel like this character is real, but we're not in performance yet. We'll come back to that stuff. This one is one for those who have seen the movie because this is going to be a reference to the overall story that's taking place and not so much an external thing. Okay, so now you know the worst that can happen, so there's nothing to be scared of, right? It's something that for us helps inform who Barley is, how he acts in his way of seeing the world, and we learn a lot more about where that comes from later on. So you can connect those dots on your own. Now we're gonna mix it up. I'm gonna go in no particular order, but we're gonna see some technical setups and details, some visual details, body mechanics and animation, character performance and acting, all that stuff. Let's do it. Something I love about this scene is the complexity that's hidden behind the scenes. We just watch the scene and we appreciate it, but those of us who animate, we know that there's some kind of a texture being revealed here as you're writing on it. You've got to constrain the hand and the pen and the notebook all together and drive that from a specific, probably a locator. You got to pick what's kind of moving this whole system and retain that flexibility. But the main thing I wanted to point out is that when he's writing on the paper, look very closely at the lines of the paper that paper is gonna actually have a give to it from that pressure. So that's actually included and deformed into that paper mesh. And it's very subtle, very nice. Here's a visual detail. You guys ever driven around on the road and seen all this like nasty looking stuff on the road, all this kind of like tar they use to fill up holes and stuff? They really captured that feeling here on this road. I also wanna point out that as we get a close up of the car, look at all this like gunk, all this dirt and kind of the rain, you know, it rains and it kind of washes off pieces of the car. And do you see how it kind of ends here? There's almost like a clean line. I'm guessing that's the windshield wipers, you know, where those are able to actually clean. And as we get onto the freeway, check this out. Watch these little guys, these little like pole thingies. Watch what happens when this big truck drives by. They actually wiggle because of the, the air pressure differences from that car wishing by. You actually see them kind of woo a little bit. One more detail in the reflection, you can even see all the scratches on this little edge. Different materials are gonna have different specularity, different kind of scratch patterns and things like that. And they really put a lot of thought into each material in this movie. Gang? What's up, gang? Another technical setup, kind of like the paper, is here on Ian's hand. When he's writing on his hand, do you see that when he pushes down, you get that little fleshy pull, that movement of the pen, pulling the skin on his hand around. And I also feel like we're seeing sweat glistening on kind of the pores of his hands. He's very shiny. And it's just a quick aside, when do you ever see animated characters sweat? That's a lot of foresight in thinking about what this character was going through right now. Behold, your chariot awaits. Our first mechanics example is when Barley gets out of this truck, 
See how the truck leans when he gets out of it? Really think about your props and your environments and how they react and respond to your character and their weight. These antennas, this bumper a little bit, this hood here, this bumper does a lot of stuff. If you watch all those different pieces, you'll see how they all move slightly independently of the main van body, which is different than the tires, which move very, very little, but they do actually move. So all these different things help the van itself to feel more organic. All right, another visual detail. When Ian opens the door, and if you look at the stuff on the car door, these, you know, especially this little handle, you'll see it kind of wiggle around. You get all this duct tape and this crack in the seat with the foam showing through. If you have ever been in a really old car, you'll notice that that specific spot where it's like all ripped and taped up, that's very accurate. It's always the front of a seat or the side where you get out because as you slide in and out of a seat, you're wearing it out a lot more than other parts of where you're sitting. In high school, I drove a 74 Chevy and it had a lot of this type of stuff and you actually got a lot of dirt in those little ridges, which you can see here. They put that in and then you've got this kind of sticker residue that you get from when you peel off a sticker because it looks like he's got lots of stickers around. So they really did a good job of showing how this van is weathered. It's not just, oh, it's beat up and it's worn. You can see where that wear and tear is coming from and why. And then same thing with this VHS tape, you can actually see all these little dust specks and dirt and even these little like, hairline smudges on what I think is the actual plastic or glass on the boom box. There's even fingerprints right here in the middle, which actually is exactly where his eye is. But I just wanna point all that out because when you are constructing a demo reel of your own or you're putting together your own shots, don't just make everything perfect because things never are. If you can add a little bit of wear and tear, a little bit of wackiness to the props, to the model, to the environment, to whatever it is, it will help to integrate your characters, make them feel a little bit more realistic, which Pixar has done a fantastic job with, especially with things like set dressing. That's one of the jobs of a job like set dressing is to put a bunch of stuff everywhere to make it feel like a lived in space, but you've got little folds on these what do you call them, post-its. You've got a pen sitting here. You've got a notebook sitting here. Nothing is very symmetrical either. You've got these post-its. These are at a different angle. These are a different angle on top of that. You've got notebooks that don't quite line up. This character is clearly not, you know, super OCD about where he lays stuff out, but it, it's that fact that makes this feel like it's a potentially real space. What is it? It's a gift from your dad. Now here we have a great performance by mom and Ian back and forth. This is a really, really well acted scene. And this is what I wanna show you. So just that reaction from Ian. The thing I wanna point out here is something I learned in Mike Mikarevich's animation collaborative summer intensive and winter intensive for that matter, which I have done videos on both of those experiences, link below if you wanna check those out. It's one of them is a really good video on what I learned in a 10 day animation workshop, which was the animation collaboratives 10 day summer epic intensive. So definitely check that one out. There's a lot of good tips in there. But one of the things that I actually learned from Mike who worked on this movie as well, is the importance of a neutral facial expression. Sometimes to have a good emotion read, it's not about going from one face to another face. It's not just changing these big emotion changes, it's relaxing the face. What's about to happen is this character is about to learn something that's shocking and amazing to them. The eyes have to widen, but the rest of the face, instead of going into, oh, it's going to relax. Everything is going to lower and the tension goes away. As you still have the eye pose and you still have the asymmetry of the face, the eyes open and the mouth drops. Everything just kind of goes, oh. Whoa. which is a great choice that you should definitely study and consider. If we continue this shot, we actually get a great example of mechanics and another character working with the, the space and environment. So when she steps on it, we can see whoop, the ladder actually presses down into the ground. And then as she's coming down, watch the actual rungs of the ladder as she steps and the whole thing kind of bounces. Most objects, when you interact with them, don't just stay completely stationary. There's a little bit of give or influence that one object has on another, so show that. One day to walk the earth. Hold on, I was just gripping it wrong. So here's a scene with a great example of kind of an acting and emotion evolution for multiple characters over scenes. So you've got a, a character here, Barley, who's gonna cast a spell. He's very confident about this, he's very excited about it, so he's very sure in his actions. Everybody's very invested in, their facial expressions are serious, their eye lines are really direct and unwavering. And then boom, nothing happens. Some tension kind of eases. Now Barley's a little bit more unsure. He's looking around more. He's a little bit more unsure kind of thing. He's shifting his hands around. He's looking back and forth. Back into it. Now he's back. He's focused. This is gonna work. This is gonna work. And now he's kind of looking up though, like, uh, will it work? Uh, I don't know. I hope so. 
That look of intensity kind of wavers. Now you've got these little things up in the middle as it kind of twists up. Like, I think this is gonna work, but I'm not entirely sure now. Sun has set one day to walk. And you have this like, oh, please work. Please, please, please work. So he's he's now not quite as, ha ha. He's like, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. But still focused and optimistic about this and really feels like it's possible. And then you see the kind of the shock, the surprise, the why didn't that work? That what? They both kind of deflate a little bit. If you focus on kind of where their brows and their lids are, you will get a sense of when and how these characters start to disengage from the idea. Ian's more invested because you can see more of his eyes. He's definitely more kind of like, whoa, versus the mom whose eyes are a little bit more relaxed. She's a little bit less sure that this is going to go anywhere, which continues to evolve as time goes on. Her eyes get a little bit droopier. You've got the same kind of thing happen with Barley as, you know, his eyes are kind of drooping down. He's getting a little bit more discouraged with this. Even the dragon's not quite as into it at this point. And then this shot in particular, watch Ian, because he's gonna go from, come on, and then you're gonna see him kind of lose steam, which is gonna lead us into the next shot. And then over here, he's really upset about it. So you actually get to see that transition happen over the course of this little montage. Now, switching back to mechanics for a second, here's a great little moment when Barley sits down on the couch, watch everyone bounce. Whoop. And there's a nice little offset. Barley will kind of go down and up. The mom will bounce up first and then Ian will bounce after that, which of course affects the dragon as well. So there's this nice little boop, boop, boop thing that happens down the chain. Now I am avoiding a lot of kind of story driven stuff. So I'm not talking a lot about when the characters change their opinions of things and the way they think about certain characters. And like, I'm not focusing on that stuff because that gets into more spoiler territory and kind of how the movie plays out. So if you guys want me to do some kind of a part two where we talk more about the story aspect of some of these things, let me know in the comments. All right, now when this van drives away, I really love these little divots right there. Watch the van just go boop, boop, them. And they may be in other animated movies. I'm not sure, but I've never noticed them ever before. Even though I didn't really think about it when I was watching the movie, that's definitely something I've driven over before and had that little bounce. Someone had to think about putting that in there and then the animator had to actually animate the van reacting to it which just adds to the feel of realism and relatability in these scenes. And same here, Barley's going to hit the gas pretty quickly. You'll see the car kind of lurch forward and Ian oof, gets pushed back and has to brace himself against the van back doors. Those are things that don't have to be in the movie. Like they could have left that out. The car could have just driven forward and Ian could just be sitting there talking to the pants, right? But instead, they chose to put that in there. Now I can't talk about character and performance if we don't bring up the manticore. There's some amazing animation in this movie as a whole, some great stuff on the Manticore, and one of my favorite shots in the whole movie, just character performance-wise, is right here. Are you gonna fix the machine or not? Yeah, in a minute. Okay. <laughs> if you've done customer service, oh, you feel that part pretty hard, right? This is that face when you've got to smile at the customer, but you are sick of their shit. talent. Entitled customers. But seriously, I really want to point this out because there's two things that happen. One is the Manticore's face, which is just fantastic. So you have this great moment from a character so you actually learn a lot about how she feels about this whole thing, but also pay a lot of attention to this side character. Watch her for a second. Don't look at the manticore, watch this character, okay? Here we go. Whatever she wanted and slay a magma beast. Are you gonna fix the machine or not? Yeah, in a minute. Okay, maybe this <laughs> It's great because you have, first of all, you have her coming up with this like bored, half lidded expression of like, um, are you gonna fix this or what? Whoosh, that face just goes, are you gonna fix it? And just like in her business. So this lady's a little bit like, oh God, what the heck? But then the manticore brings up her arm real quick and the lady flinches back because she's afraid she's gonna get punched in the face, which I think is just a fantastic choice. Don't just focus on the one character who's saying something. That character's gonna move around and gesture. The other characters around should probably react to that. By the way, if anybody is watching this, who was on the team, who animated this, who knows who animated this, please let me know in the comments. Now let's take a look at magic for a second. This is, uh, well, first of all, the effects of the magic are amazing. Love it. <gasps> Aloft, Something I love about this is the mechanics built into how magic works. It doesn't just freeze things on the spot. You still have weight and mechanics happening. It has this, this, this overlapping action, whatever you would call that, follow through. And then when Ian pulls away from it, it really feels like he's locked in place and then has to yank it out to get it out of the spell, which is then something he kind of learns and uses later to disengage certain spells. And you know, that comes with its own challenges, but it really helps to make it feel like the spell's connected to what's happening. He's not just like, do this, move over here. It's, it'd be too free to lock in and be connected to something. It needs to feel like there's, there's weight on the object, just as there's weight happening as a result of 
the whole you get it. It was unbelievable. I mean, you, you were just like, and the beam was just floating there. My brother is a wizard. When the character lets go of the wheel for a second, the car like drift off to the side and then they re-get it. And that's just his driving style. So here he lets go of the car. The whole thing kind of goes this way. Like he knows what he's doing. He grabs it, he goes back to the left. So you actually have a lot of really amazing driving scenes animated in this, in this movie of characters on the steering wheel. They're actually doing all the stuff. They're looking around. So here we've got another car thing. And this is one that I also have experience with from heavy old old car doors. He needs to get out of the van. You don't just grab it and push with a big heavy door. You, you kind of go in with the shoulder and just kind of against it to push it open. But it says we have a full tank. No, that doesn't work. Another one of my favorite acting scenes in this movie that I can show you from the first half anyway. Actually, right after this technical thing, we've got another hand pushing down on the pages. You know, it's gonna flatten out and push that way a little bit. You've got Barley's finger kind of squishing against the page here. And with the book, I really like the way he kind of uses his fingers to just kind of tap on the book here because he's not like, you know, this. He's not pointing, he's more like this book. There's a respect, I, at least the way I interpret it. Like it feels reverent of what's in there. Like he's just this, I don't know. Something about that to me feels interesting and good. <laughs> now here's another one of my favorite shots of performance animation in this movie. Ow! What, Splinter? Can we sand this thing down? No, it's an ancient staff with magic in every glorious fiber. You can't sand it down. All right, all right. <laughs> I love that because he has this like, this is amazing in every fiber. Send it down. He has this, I, I just, who animated this? Tell them I love their work. They did a great job. Uh, something wrong? Sorry, it's just your stance is, uh, here, chin up. Like, here's a good example. Barley kind of comes in, and you just see his elbow off screen. And then he's in this pose, which he stays in. He doesn't leave this pose, but it all stays within the same feeling until he kind of comes out of it. Returning to this shot, you've got the whole package. You've got body mechanics, you've got acting, you've got technical challenges of ropes and constraints and different things. There's a lot going on, but I love this performance by Barley. Are you still alive? Yes. Okay, so now you know the worst that can happen, so there's nothing to be scared of, right? I just love the choices of gestures and the way he's kind of looking in different directions, and that's just very nice. Love it, wanted to point it out. Let's keep going. Now this is probably the closest into the middle of the movie as I'm gonna get, and it's a really great little mechanic slash acting thing, technical. It's kind of a lot of things in one. You've got running and kind of popping around, so you've got the mechanics, and then you've got that right there. The thing about that that I really want to emphasize is the jiggle in the arms. Often you can use Benbows. You know, there's uh, hidden controls on a lot of rigs that allow you to warp and shape the arms into spaghetti noodle arms. I talk about that in a lot of my rig reviews. Now this is the last clip I'm gonna show, and this is a great example of combining mechanics and acting and a lot of different things into one shot, also with constraints and more technical stuff. Um, you have a whole set to deal with. There's a lot in this. This is like a fantastic example of like something you'd want to have on your demo reel. But I have one other thing I want to add to it after we take a little peek at it. Mom! <laughs> Lazy! Down! Who's a good dragon? Who's a good dragon? So, how was school? It was really good. Well, all right. So that is a fantastic shot and it continues on, but I don't want to play any further because it starts to get spoilery. But yeah, this fantastic shot, something that I noticed is when Ian says at the end, it was really good. That line of dialogue, I feel like the lip sync is a little bit off on the good. So I'm gonna play that again so you can see it. Focus on the lip sync for Ian's line here. School, it was really good. Well, if you take a look at the word good, I feel like it doesn't quite read with the lip sync. School, it was really good. Well, now before I point this out, the, the way Ian says good is like really good. It absolutely works. You can absolutely say the line that Tom Holland says and animated this way because it does make sense. Really good. You don't really see me go, good, right? Like I'm not doing the whole blah, blah, blah. It's just really good. You don't actually see it. But I feel like when you don't see it, to me feels like something's missing. This is the good. I feel like if I were to have given notes on this, I'd like to see more of an ooh shape for the good. And maybe it wouldn't have worked. Maybe it was tried, I don't know. But yeah, again, I'm not trying to say that this was done wrong or anything. It's a fantastic shot. Really impressive. Now, if you would like to see videos of me maybe setting up some of these different shots, like, like, oh, how would you do like a person writing with a pen on a piece of paper? Like, how would you do that? 
or other constraint setups of like the rope of the character or multiple characters interacting. I don't know if there's stuff from any of this or from other movies that you're wondering how you could do it in your shot. Let me know what those things are down below in the comments and I can maybe make videos on that stuff. Maybe we can do a part two to Onward. Maybe we can try to recreate some of the effects done. I don't know. I really enjoyed Onward like a lot. But yeah, I'd love to know what else you guys want to see from me and also feel free to jump in the Discord. We've got over 3,000 artists in there hanging out, answering questions for each other, having conversations, getting to know each other, especially now that a lot of us are at home. It kind of is a nice community to be a part of and just talk about creative stuff or non-creative stuff if you need a break from it. Or if you want to talk about it live, I stream three days a week, live on Twitch, tons of Q&A, a lot of demos, a lot of cool stuff. So come hang out and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell on this YouTube channel so you don't miss new uploads. And feel free to browse around. A lot of you guys are newer and have found the channel more recently and seen maybe a couple of videos here and there, but haven't really gone through and seen what else is is here. I've done a lot of interviews and a lot of tutorials and a lot of just different advice videos and all kinds of different stuff. So take a look around. I'm sure there's some stuff that'll help you out. And if you don't see anything, please let me know what you were kind of hoping to find so that I can make those videos next. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.